Hello everyone, good evening. I am Sanmitra Chakte. I am the Dean of School of Management, World University of Design. And we have been talking to veterans, uh, veterans in the industry and academicians for a long time discussing about design strategy, design management, design, about innovation and sustainability. Today we will be talking to Dr. Lefteris Hiatakis and we, and we will be talking to him about design education, about visual communication, about his viewpoints on strategy and also about a conference that he has been he will be organizing. So I'm waiting for him to join. The moment he joins, we can then start our little discussion that we do. Please keep your questions ready so that we can uh, ask him during the session or in the uh, or in the session Q and A session, which is at the end of this discussion. So he's joining out here. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi. How are you how, doing? How are you? Fantastic. Wonderful. Fantastic. Are you done with your setup? Yes, Anita? yes, yes. Very, very good. Very good. Uh, I am just getting distracted by the amount of books around and because yeah. I really love books. So <laughs> that is what is happening right now. Uh, but yes, let's start. Fantastic. Okay, okay. So today we are talking to Dr. Lefteris Hetakis and he is, uh, he's done his MA from RCA and he's been doing his uh, PhD from Batspa University and he's also uh, working across in the field of design education, although he is a visual communicator is what he calls himself. And he's given a very, very interesting introduction, uh, which I'm going to read out for all of you. So he is a visual communicator with an extensive knowledge and experience in various creative industries. Uh, his clients are publishers, magazines, multinational advertising agencies, as well as entrepreneurs. He's, uh, he's guided by proactive commitment, uh, which needs with electrifying uh, originality, sound judgment and strict morals. Okay, And he specializes with a wide range of creative projects. Uh, right from handmade corporate identity to effective eye-popping publishing. Yes, so we're talking to uh, Lefteris. Uh, I hope I can call you Lefteris, yeah, right? Yeah, of course, of course. Yeah, yeah, okay. So, yeah, we're talking to Lefteris and uh, we will be asking questions on uh, communication, on design strategy, on design education. And he is organizing a conference, so we'll be asking him some questions on that too. Excellent. And before we start, I must say he is the inspiration for me to start these talks because he got an interview done with me. And after that, I thought of this idea of moving to Instagram and uh, talking to students thank and creating a, a repository uh, for them. So thanks a lot, Lev. Today. Thank you. Thank you, Sanmita. It was fantastic <laughs> talking to you on design education Great. talks. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's really nice. So, so let's start with an introduction from yourself and then I can start with my questions. Yeah, of course. I mean, uh, for the past, um, well, I used to be a musician. Then I decided to go into, into visual arts. So uh, mm -hmm. I had a, a long study in the visual arts, uh, a long study in, uh, in design agencies, in uh, marketing agencies, in publishing houses. I went freelance for many years. Uh, and then in 2009, I started teaching. Mm -hmm. uh, since 2015, I've been conducting mm -hmm. uh, uh, practical practical research on uh, mm -hmm. the relationship between lecturers, students, and the industry. So a lot of the mm -hmm. projects that I've been working for the past sort of five years uh, have come out mm -hmm. of that. So it's a way of communicating and mm -hmm. involving more uh, in the conversation mm -hmm. of practice-based design education. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. And what about... Uh... The conference that you're going to be arranging soon. Yes, last last year we pioneered mm. uh, the Alicante Design Education Forum, uh, mm -hmm. which was a very successful three three day event. Uh, you mm -hmm. can also mm -hmm. find the YouTube link. I mean, uh, on the, on the New Art School channel. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. and that was really successful. Uh, we mm -hmm. had hundreds of uh, people coming physically, uh, participating online. Uh, this year it's a little bit it's a little bit more challenging. Uh, mm -hmm. We have a physical. Uh, space in Valencia, in Spain. Okay. 
well, hopefully uh, things will be okay uh, until because it's on uh, November. Yeah, November fifth and sixth. No. <laughs> no, November fifth and sixth. Uh, so okay, okay. Uh, hopefully things will be good <laughs> by then, mm. uh, so we can mm. make it as physical as possible. Although we're we're preparing more for virtual participation, mm -hmm. uh, but it'll be very exciting, and it's really an open discussion on on design and design design education. Uh, the theme of the conference mm -hmm. is analog and digital. So we'll okay, be talking. Okay. I mean, the theme is very very open. Uh, mm -hmm. But it has to be people that are interested in submitting. They have to submit things that are related to design education. Mm -hmm. um, although the workshops can be mm -hmm. uh, about design, so they can have can get mm -hmm. students that are, can talk about design. But in in the talks and in the presentations, mm -hmm. they need to be about mm -hmm. design education. Mm -hmm. Great, great. So uh, wonderful. So I think I'm going to move ahead with my questions around yeah. over here. Also, I'd request you to, after I put this on IGTV, maybe if you can comment with the link where people can apply for your of design course, conference course, to add course, into. Of course. Uh, because I'm sure there are a few academicians also who view these videos. And for them, it will be a very good opportunity to participate. Yes. Into yes. You. But remember to make it as practical as possible. So this is more about, it's not about the papers. It's not about the, the theory. It's about the practice base. Mm -hmm. It's about the doing. Yeah. Right, right, right. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to ask you this very first question about elaborating your journey through from being a musician to a design academician. So how, mm. how has it been and how has been, what has been your country of origin? And I think you've moved countries I've, also yes, and yes, yes. moved a lot. So, so if you can tell us the journey. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, I, actually, I'm, I'm not an academician. I'm still a designer. I'm a design practitioner. So I'm a design, I'm kind of a designer that teaches. Uh, we okay. don't want to, I, I don't like to keep it too theoretical, you know, I'd like to keep it real and practical uh, mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. possible. Uh, I mean, mm -hmm. yeah, the, the journey has been very interesting because uh, mm -hmm. before the age of 17, I was in a room by myself, sort of six, seven hours, you know, playing, playing classical violin. So, I, you know, and then mm -hmm. I realized that this is not me. So I said, okay, mm -hmm. you know, I was drawing a lot. So I said, okay, I'm going to start a career in, in the arts. And uh, mm -hmm. I went to the UK at 17. I did a foundation mm -hmm. course, uh, mm -hmm. worked really hard. It was the hardest year those days. It was extremely, extremely hard. And then got into Kingston for illustration. So I did a degree in illustration, uh, worked mm -hmm. in the industry, went to the Royal College, did my master's in visual communication, um, mm -hmm. and then worked in London. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and, and then sort of my, my career started more in the, in the practical advertising. Uh, mm -hmm. th then I was working for some years, and then went mm. freelance. Um, mm. Really, the, the, the most important, when I went to teach in 2009, I realized how much mm -hmm. things have changed in education. It was a bit of a shock how much things had changed to the time when I graduated 10 years ago. So then I started, I graduated mm. in 1999 from my degree. So then 10 years later, mm -hmm. things have changed. So I was trying to make sense of it all. <laughs> why, had, why did they change so much? Uh, to try to make it more practical, get more drawing in education. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and since then I have taught in many countries around the world, uh, mm -hmm. always focusing on really on getting the practical side of design. So really, you know, the doing, because a lot of, a lot of design has become right now too, too much about the theory. And it, do, it doesn't help, you know, when, when, when you have to, to swim in the rough seas, you've got to be a good swimmer. Mm -hmm. And it, it can get right. pretty rough, especially now that things have become really disrupted. And, uh, mm -hmm. But as long as, as graduates and students have strong uh, seeing and design skills, they've mm -hmm. got a strong hand-heart, what they call hand-heart-eye coordination skills. Mm -hmm. yeah? So they can really uh, analyze what they're seeing and really turn mm -hmm. that into, uh, into design skills. Uh, they'll, always be, they'll always be okay, but it's not about, you know, in the, dis in the disruption. Uh, mm -hmm. This disruption is pretty major, but design is always design. Uh, whether mm -hmm. we call it uh, you know, visual communication is always visual communication, whether you, you, it's, it's printed or it's done uh, online or on the screen. So the, the mm -hmm. principles are the same, and those that, are, that are, um, know how to use the principles of design can uh, swim in NEC, really. All right. So, so I think, yes, design principles is something of a course that we take up with the design management students also, so that they understand what are the design principles and how to apply them. 
the only thing is they don't really um we don't expect hand skills out of them mm-hmm. but they definitely understand design principles and they try to apply it in every project and they do these collaborative projects together with the designers and uh, then those are put up into their portfolios so going back to college days see what we are trying to decipher is uh, because i come from nid which is national institute of, institute of design uh, and we have these wonderful stories wonderful incidents that happened during our college years which have helped us develop ourselves and we see a striking similarity in all the seniors and all the batches coming across and we are trying to give it to the place that we are in so i am trying to give my experience to the world university of design the students over there so that they also benefit out of it so what have been those most interesting times into your college times i want to start with foundation so how was your foundation uh, foundation period as in uh, what were the very wonderful assignments or some good events or well, it, it, yeah it was it was very intense i i I, hmm. uh, i went to what is now you created then was kent institute of art and design and those days uh, back in 96 uh, foundation mm-hmm. was the toughest year because first of all there weren't okay. any places in, in mm-hmm. the universities in the uk for very very few so you were not guaranteed mm-hmm. a place uh, you can you could only uh, select one really really good university so Mm-hmm. you didn't you couldn't go to all the universities like you can now you could only go to mm-hmm. very few as a first choice a little bit more mm-hmm. as a second choice and a lot more as a third mm-hmm. choice but they were also mm-hmm. in category uh at the time at kingston mm-hmm. uh we were expecting mm-hmm. we had about 800 applications for 25 places so wow. uh it okay. it was a very uh it was the toughest it was very tough uh mm-hmm. they took us through all the disciplines of art and design so you 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 mm-hmm. you go through fine art fashion uh, sculpture you go through all illustration graphic design mm-hmm. uh, very much drawing based a lot of a lot of life drawing uh and you build a portfolio and of course then the interview mm-hmm. stage uh you know so you 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 which was uh really really intense and and at the time you know kingston at the time uh was was a very very uh intense school it was almost like you know it was it, it was very famous for being a commando course that you had to be there you know mm-hmm. every day uh, 8 mm-hmm. to 10 it was sort of really 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 early and really leaving really really late so uh it was 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. well, well we, we, we were working at home after a while but it never stopped you know it never stopped uh-huh. it was it, okay. it never stopped you had to be there you had to be on the ball you know it wasn't mm-hmm. like the courses today uh mm-hmm. uh whereas most most full time courses are what i would call by by the standards of my time i would call them part time you know so mm-hmm. because it's like you are in a job it's like you're in a studio yeah you know? a design school okay. is like you're in a studio and you're working all the time mm-hmm. uh so however since since the days of 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 you know when i graduated industry changed a lot uh mm-hmm. demands changed a lot uh mm-hmm. and um uh, it has changed but what what's really good is since all all of my colleagues were still in design from then you know because we we sort of it was, it was a very very good the students that w- were selected mm-hmm. uh, went through a very tough process mm-hmm. so and uh, how about your days in rca as in how were they yeah i mean any I event mean, any professor that you really i mean all, uh, all the professors were, were very with. good the rock college it it gives you a different a- approach uh mm-hmm. if you like the degree is 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 your ability yeah your mm-hmm. your 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 craft uh, your ability mm-hmm. to do something uh the other thing mm-hmm. is the ability to think freely and openly and see all your mm-hmm. uh, the overview and and really think mm-hmm. in a different way uh so they mm-hmm. they challenge you to think in a way uh that you're not used to so so it it gives uh ultimate freedom but with the ultimate freedom comes the ultimate responsibility yeah so so you <laughs> you get challenged by many 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 uh teachers there in many many ways mm. uh so what was your favorite that, challenge who there were many i mean uh oof, there were many many uh, okay. uh, uh john rosencroft lectures uh, and mocky mosky's mm. uh, illustration course jeff willis graphics mm-hmm. you know, dunfern uh, guidance uh really really amazing uh time uh but at at the time it it didn't feel like that you know they, they kind of put you in a confusion mm. because of the confusion yeah. you sort of come out and mm-hmm. you uh 
you're used you're used to structure in your degree. I mean, and and, and but then you go there and it's it's really really free and open. Um, and in the, it's really there that I wanted to uh, grow uh, more than than illustration. So so you know I, I did more. Mm -hmm. I went to graphics. I went to visual communication. Um, mm -hmm. So I started thinking bigger than illustration in a way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. I think this is really wonderful. So, so this will be helpful for students who are starting their uh, course today as a fresher, as mm. for their foundation courses. Because nowadays there are foundation courses and like you say, they are intensive, but I'm sure, like you say, they are part-time with respect to what you did. Well, <laughs> it's really helpful. Uh, you know, it, it design yes. is not... Uh, what I said to my students is design is, is the hard yes. way out. It, it's the most enjoyable exactly. way out. It's the most enjoyable yes, way out yes. because you get to do what you really want to do. But at the same mm -hmm. time, it's not the e easier than medical school. In fact, I, I think it could be harder because it, it's it's, so, it's really, really tough. So, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. Uh, it, it's not now. Now, uh, students have more tools, yeah? have more, yes. but, but they got to get the tools to know them deeper. It's much easier to do things now. Yeah, I mean, the only, when I was at, at Kingston, the only uh, instant camera that there was was a Polaroid. Yeah, and, and that's, well, that's not so long ago. So if, you want, if we wanted mm -hmm. to draw a stance of somebody in an illustration, we'd just take a Polaroid of them and have it quickly so we could sort of draw it uh, for an illustration. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, of course, yeah, we had Quark, we had illustration, we had Photoshop, but, but you know, digital photography came a little bit later. Uh, so now you have these amazing tools which do amazing things uh, but as well you, people don't need the latest you know also there are there are tools that are you know the the the, the tool industry is trying to, to convince people that oh you need the latest you know and the latest and the latest but the tools are already so powerful and the students can do so much with these tools but it's not about the tool it's learning to use the tool you know or like mm -hmm. when you're when you're drawing and painting on your ipad which mm -hmm. is fantastic you know procreate this is it's an incredible program, but you've got to know what these materials do in real life in order to use mm -hmm. the digital materials in a physical way. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So, so mm -hmm. it's really about uh, uh, sharpening your skills, uh, your observation mm -hmm. skills, your seeing skills. This, this is, this is mm -hmm. the greatest mm -hmm. problem today with the students is that they don't, you know, they don't want to sharpen their skills so much. And, that, and, that's, and that's painful. It's a painful. We, we, we were, <laughs> when I was a student, we, we, we didn't see that much the value of drawing so much. So we were sort of complaining. But later on, you, you see the value. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you see the value of yeah. having observed your, of having trained your, your hand-hard-eye coordination. You don't see it during your studies so much, you might mm -hmm. say, but you really appreciate it later on. Yes, yes. I, I remember we used to also be told to go to the local railway station every day and sketch every day. And uh, yeah, now don't ask how much did I really do, but yeah, we were supposed to do at least fifty per day, five zero, yeah. and uh, yes. So, so that was that is a learning in a different way. And like you say, at that moment we don't understand it, but uh, we were also very fortunate to have a professor who was hell bent on using pencil first. He was mm. like, first use your pencil for two whole years. I will not let you touch computers. It is not needed. You have to first try to understand how to use your tools and then go ahead and apply it on the computer. So, yeah, I think uh, in a way we have been a little luckier in that sense that we have had that kind of an education which can be carried forward for a longer time probably without mm -hmm. being absolute after after two years, three years that you go change the technology, get something else. That's not needed with us. Yeah, I think, I think students need to understand the, the commitment you know, the, the time commitment design has and the, and the relationship between, okay, when you do something in the class, but then you need tenfold amount of time to really exactly. uh, make it your own. It's not, mm -hmm. it's the relationship between, between the class and, and you know, and mm -hmm. then what you do on your own time, which, which needs a lot of, a lot of practice. Mm -hmm. Right, right. So I, I see a lot of comments and questions coming in, uh, but generally I keep them at the 45th minute so that we can cover them. All okay. And we finish our conversation. I hope it is okay with you. Otherwise, yeah, it's we fine, can it's take fine. them out. It's fine. Okay, okay. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm still going to decipher this now. Uh, then you started working and then you moved towards freelance. So how has that been as in the freelance journey? Because there are many students who are on this verge of thinking whether I should start on my own, whether I should freelance, whether I should yeah. start working. So, so what are your viewpoints? Personally, I'm completely against starting as a freelancer. Uh, okay. You need to be okay. in a company for some time. 
uh, the if you like you can change e jobs easily and quickly if you like to gain the maximum experience mm -hmm. or not if you're mm -hmm. happy mm -hmm. you know but stay uh, it used to be the case uh, in the generation mm -hmm. before me that they would consider an extra the degree was one plus three plus three so this you mm -hmm. you're also an apprentice for three years in the industry so if you see it like that if you see that mm -hmm. as a graduate you still have another three years of apprenticeship in the industry yeah mm -hmm. uh, the greatest things i learned in-house i mean really my education started when i started working in-house uh, in a company mm -hmm. uh, and mm -hmm. that's where i could i could see for example when when i was in you know my, my real in design skills started when i had to do magazine quickly you know my real uh, skills uh, this, uh, in, in books design started when i had to uh, design book jackets and, and really learn how the publication mm -hmm. worked, the publishing world worked from in-house. And then I could print my exactly. own books. But that started years mm -hmm. after I was in-house. And I, ah, this is mm -hmm. how they do it. Yeah. So you must uh, start. The, the, the best way is to start as an apprentice and start during your studies. I was going to companies when I was a student during the summer. Uh, I mm -hmm. was asking companies if I could, if I could, you know, stay for one or two, three weeks, just to look mm -hmm. or just to make coffee. You don't need to do anything, just to observe. Uh, mm -hmm. No, honestly, just to observe in the beginning how mm -hmm. things are working, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. because you, you cannot actually interfere in the process yet. Yeah? So, mm -hmm. start as early as possible. Become interested in the market that you have chosen mm -hmm. as early as possible, mm -hmm. and then you have a much better idea. But no, there's no way that one can start freelance unless unless they're doing something very specific unless unless they work during their during their school their university years so much uh, with a yeah. company or you know and, or or they have some kind of a mentor that can that can guide them yeah sure but but it's yeah. also good to to start as working as a team I mean the great the greatest designs have been made as part of a team freelancing is is good but uh, it also uh, working in teams is also very fun. Yeah, I think freelancing uh, immediately becomes a working in silos and then uh, understanding those little nitty gritties are lost. And uh, yes, maybe later in your life after you finish working for a given amount of time, then of course you can move around and you can think of freelancing or coming up with something of your own or you know, there, there has to be a proper planning to that. Otherwise, uh, it just so happens that you're hung up somewhere and then eventually you're nowhere. So Absolutely. that's exactly what happens. So I think, yeah, this is a very wonderful piece of advice. With, with this, I'll move ahead. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, my next question is, what has been your inspiration? Oh, inspiration. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> we discussed think... these questions. You yeah, don't yeah, yeah, look course, so course, surprised. Of course, of course, of course. <laughs> of course. Uh, okay. It's uh, inspiration. I, I cannot stress the, the, the importance of inspiration. Uh, as uh, for students, it's very good to have somebody that, that you, you aspire mm -hmm. to. Uh, I think that uh, because I've had, um, okay, in, in, in sports and in music, uh, the result is, is very visible. You're, so if you haven't mm -hmm. done the training, the result is very, very, you can see it or you can't see it if you haven't done the training. So I think that people, I mean, when I was, when I was a student, uh, I learned everything about the work of Giorgio de Chirico, the painter, yeah, the surrealist painter. So I read, mm. I read his autobiography four times. I, I, I read every book there was. Uh, I tried to see all the paintings. At the time in Cork Street, uh, in the galleries in, in London, uh, you, you actually was able to see some real paintings. And of course, in, 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 the, in, the, in the museums, but also in galleries sometimes uh, mm. from, the, from the, his period of the 70s and how he mixed his, his oils. And so... You know, as, a, as an illustrator, uh, but, but I, I had, he was my inspiration. Of course, now I have, I have many, many inspirations uh, of people, uh, but it's very important to, to, um, to have somebody and really get mm -hmm. to know as much as, as, as possible about, because also mm -hmm. even better, you can see, find out the inspiration of your inspiration. So mm -hmm. you can go straight to the source, yeah? Uh, yeah, I, inspiration is very, very important. I mean, I, I'm, I'm inspired by, by Bach very much, by his music, you know, because that's also very analogous to design. Music and design, there's a direct relationship. Uh, mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, many, many, many people have inspired me. Great. And I really want you to, uh, again, give that emphasis on reading of books. Can we discuss that a little more? Of course. Because I keep telling my students to read books and it's yeah. a little challenging. It is challenging. 
Yeah. I think yeah, with so, the book, so, especially, you know, the Kiriko wrote, wrote his autobiography himself because he, he, mm-hmm. he said that uh, a biography is a, is a form of gossip. Yeah? <laughs> so he didn't want his, his biography written by somebody else. Uh, mm-hmm. He wrote his own. And it is a very honest uh, and a very intense but, uh, that really illustrates his life and what he went through. Uh, so yeah, it's uh, the, the books. Also, uh, when you read books, it's you'll find most of the stuff that's not easily available on, on the internet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So when you do a, when you read a book and you go to a specific area, you will find information that's not easily available. It doesn't come up. Or you browse when you browse through a book, you're going to find something that's random as well. Yeah, it's not, well, like when you do a Google search, you get all these related things, similar. Mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. when you're browsing right. in a in a library or or in a book even of different chapters, you might come across with something that's completely random. Mm-hmm. That is not uh, as, as a, a pre-planned search search uh, algorithm. So, so yeah, I, I think this. Yeah. No, sorry. Yes, yes. Please continue. Please. Continue. No, no. Yeah, this is this is this is. Uh, yeah, so, so it's it, it's very important. Uh, what's really amazing is all the, a lot of rare books now it can be found on PDFs. Uh, mm-hmm. So a lot of, and that's, and that, but that's quite difficult as well. You find all these amazing books, you can find the whole Bauhaus, for example, uh, collection mm-hmm. of books on PDF, but it's also quite hard that, to read on screen sometimes, or you know, even, when, exactly. even when it's printed. Uh, it's a real mm-hmm. shame that many universities decide to get rid of, of their uh, library, you know, sometimes in a really... Um, the random way, I would say. They didn't, they didn't mm-hmm. even photograph them. You know, they, they, a lot of universities around the world got rid of their libraries without even having kept a record of the books they used to have. So, uh, and also books also vibrate a certain, a certain, you know, especially if it's a design book, if it's an older design book, it has mm-hmm. a certain, it has a certain physicality about it. It vibrates a certain, a certain energy, you know. So it is being also having being around books is quite also inspiring. Yes, and I've been distracted by those books behind you for the whole talk. <laughs> you should have told me you're going to sit there. <laughs> okay. I, I must tell you a little incident from our side also. Is yeah. We had a professor, MP Ranjan, and you won't believe, like, uh, we in, uh, like in our institute, we had this huge room which every professor gets. And, his, and, the, and every room is uh, a glass room. So that everyone can learn from each other. That was the basic idea of that architecture. So when we used to pass from that way, that whole wall was covered with books. The whole of the transparent glass wall was all covered with books. And he used to be inside those books, literally inside those books. And amazing. As in, and whenever you went to him, he used to like, Sanvatra, look at this book. This is a new book that I got. See, it has got a different cover. See, it's got a different touch. It has got a, that was also very important that a book has a different uh, personality and uh, that needs to be read and that can never match. Uh, nothing digital can match it for sure. Absolutely. So, yeah, yes. Even the printing, yes, if, you, yes. if you get any life of printing or special color printing, you know, also CMYK, even mm-hmm. in modern books is quite limiting because the colors, mm-hmm. It only has a very limited mm. palette. So an older book might mm. have special colors or special paper. Or you also learn if you're going to become a designer, it's good to touch and feel different papers and, mm. and learn how different papers, how printing on a different paper changes the whole uh, appearance of, of something. So what yeah. is that, that one book that you really, really love with regards to what Ooh. we are working on right now? Oh, uh, oof, I really books. want you to pull a book from, from your book rack right now. Oh. I don't know. I just be so... Okay. No, you don't have to. I mean, okay. I just, I mean, okay. Uh, oh, one second. One yeah. second. Yeah. I mean, I mean, for the, for design students. Yeah. One second. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I mean, for, uh, for design students, I would I would start with the problem solved, you know. Mm, problem okay. solved by Michael Johnson. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. I think I think uh, this is a really really good design book. But of course, there's so many. Uh, you know, Paul, Paul Rand uh, always mm. inspired me in my teachings because he's a designer. But but Michael Johnson is 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 a is a, is a fantastic living designer uh, that uh, of course that uh, is very articulate with his work. Uh, mm-hmm. And uh, 
uh, Paul Rand is another one. But there are many. There are many. Uh, I mean, uh, ah, another favorite of mine is uh, Professor Phil Cleaver. What mm -hmm. they didn't teach you in design school? Yeah. Oh yes, that's wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So. Uh, so yeah, that's sort of many, many, many books, but you know, you can get lost in them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is the, that is the truth that you can get lost in them. But your your sound something you need to sort of maybe raise your sound. Something happened to your sound? Uh, actually, I got a call, so I put off the call. Okay. This is what okay. No worries. No worries. Can you hear me now? No, not not really, but okay. I mean, like, the volume is lower. Ah, that's better. Ah. Uh, yeah, that's better. Is this okay? Better. Perfect. I'm gonna hold this like this so that yeah, you know you can course, hear me. No, no, fun, okay, fun, I think fun, yeah, fun. this 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 is very important that despite it is design, reading those books is also essential. Even reading books that are related to visual arts or fine arts, like uh, fine arts specifically painting, illustrations, and things like that. Also, those books are also very important. Like how you said that uh, the person actually writes that autobiography by himself. You know, so so you are reading that every single line is going to help you understand. It's going to help you work through it, and uh, maybe it'll in a way affect affect your design in a good way possible, uh, or it may impact. Uh, what you're doing in a good way possible so i think Absolutely. yes reading again i'm again emphasizing on reading <laughs> which i keep doing every week and i ask my students to come up with a review of the book and it is challenging to get them to read well you That's know social media sure. is a distraction i mean right now there are 100 great events happening simultaneously okay mm -hmm. to, to, to this conversation but at the same mm -hmm. time uh, illustrators are quite uh, lo are loners yeah, so they work in mm. isolation. Designers are more mm. sociable, but at the same time, there's got to be a time where you turn things off, everything, mm. and go mm. into your mm. studio and focus mm. on that one thing, and because distractions uh, uh, can be can be uh, can, are not very good for 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 inspiration and for for the workflow. So you know well, we are distracted. Uh, we remember, you know, again, we used to have a, a physical and a digital area. You know, that's another mm -hmm. fantastic area thing, you know. So you can have like a desk that's purely physical and a desk that's purely digital. Because when you work on your mm -hmm. computer as well, yeah, you get all these notifications coming in, and flowing your email, your <laughs> everything is bleeping. Yeah, but which you can have an area where it's purely, uh, purely uh, distraction free, uh, mm -hmm. and then you can just focus on 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 on, mm -hmm. on your design process really. Mm -hmm. I think that's a good idea to have that physical and digital. Uh, place separated so that people can yeah, read because it, then you can mix understand. them when you understand what each one does really really well yeah i, I love mm -hmm. digital yeah, it's not it's not of course i'm not against digital but it's really understood fantastic to understand what each done the merits of each one yeah? uh, mm -hmm. and and what and what can be done to mix them great so so with this i'm, I'm going to move to the next question that we have uh, you have, uh, of course, we spoke about the conference and uh, I'm sure you gave details about it. So, so another thing that you're doing are your podcasts. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. Tell us more about that. Oh, fantastic. Well, Design Education Talks uh, started around January time. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I wanted to continue the conversations really because I started in the conference. Uh, and also continue the research in a very practical way, because I'm always looking on the relationship between the students, the teachers, and the industry. Because these these three areas are really not talking to each other very much. Yeah, they don't. The, the conversation is not really with more conversation between the three stakeholders. So, uh, and at the same time, uh, I wasn't uh, seeing much of of discussion on on, on practice based education. Yeah? So mm -hmm. there's a lot of discussion on theory, and, yeah, which is fantastic, which is very much needed. But there's not much discussion on practice-based education. So I wanted to, mm -hmm. to get uh, practitioners mm -hmm. uh, and, of course, educators. Uh, and, of course, an educator is also a designer that educate designers in their studio. You know, when you, an educator is not necessarily strictly somebody that is teaching at university. Yeah? If you mm -hmm. are uh, a designer that has been teaching designers and in your studio mentoring for, designers for, mentoring, also of in, course yeah yeah of course so that, yeah, that's that's yeah. you know that's the same thing so uh 
yeah, so so we started, uh, and it was a it was a tricky road in the beginning because I, I you know the, the best way to learn is by doing, but at the same time there were all these technical things that needed to be resolved. Uh, and the flow and the, everything. And thank God uh, I had plenty of help from uh, Peter Bella from Design the Ducks podcast. Mm. Uh, mm -hmm. We're still, still collaborating. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so now we are in episode, I think, 21, I think 21st episode. One, one, we have one podcast every week that comes out, mm -hmm. um, which, is quite, which is quite a bit, but uh, it's also fun and, and necessary. Uh, yeah, and uh, it's mainly trying to talk about the present state of design education and what we can do, mm -hmm. how we can improve it, uh, mm -hmm. what are people's Some opinions. interesting insights from any of them that you've been doing. Oh, I think, I think every, every uh, guest has their own personality. Uh, mm -hmm. I think we've had giants of design. Uh, mm. uh, that have uh, that have taught our teaching. We've had mm. more people that were uh, a bit more towards theory, but also had really real, interesting practical insights. Uh, mm. We had many guests from industry. Uh, so far, we've had twenty-one guests that have been published. So every episode uh, has its own merits, uh, and it gives you a different view because it's it's all about the guest. It's not about mm -hmm. me. It's just you know, I, I create the uh, the uh, the room, the space, and people come and talk. Really, mm -hmm. I, I think that is really wonderful. So there's someone who's asking podcasts are on which platform? Podcasts, okay. There is a, there is a, there is ma on many platforms. There is uh, YouTube, yeah, the New Art School. If you Google mm -hmm. the New Art School. Uh, mm -hmm. You're gonna get a channel. Maybe you can send a link. Yeah, of course, I'll send all the links. Uh, send all the links and link. uh, people can we have. We are on, on every audio platform: iTunes, mm -hmm. Google Podcasts. We are on uh, Spotify. Uh, every almost every conceivable podcast platform you can find. There's a fantastic also platform called Podchaser, which I highly mm -hmm. recommend for podcasters because you can actually get your guests and and put it in very nice order. Uh, it's called Podchaser. It's like the Internet Movie Database of podcast of podcasting. Um, That's a lot of work, I'm telling you. Doing well, yeah, these... it, it, it's enjoyable, yes. though. You know, and, and then, of course, uh, we, we transcribe the podcast and we get the quotes. And then, you know, at some point, hopefully, we might have a publication uh, mm -hmm. from the episodes. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's also really between between the annual education design education fora. Uh, mm. we can have the podcasts. So it's really to keep mm -hmm. the, the, the conversation between each annual uh, design education forum as well. Oh, wonderful. So so please put up the link. So you have to put two links now, two homeworks. I'll put all One the links. is your podcast and for the conference. So two yes, things absolutely. To absolutely. Yeah, great. So, so I'll move forward to the next question okay. that I have. Uh, before moving to the next question, I would first like to thank you for coming into this little Instagram live that I do. Thank you for inviting uh, me. Just... It's a fantastic work you've done. It's fantastic. I just hope so. It's just a little uh, thing that I do. I'm sure it's not on a very big professional scale. Oh, come and on. I'm, I'm just wanting to create a repository for students. That's all. It's wonderful. No, no, it's wonderful what you're doing. It's wonderful. Thank you for inviting me. So, so great. So I'm, uh, uh, and I thank you now because Instagram closes by on its own. So that is the reason why. Oh, really? So I'm going to jump on to first questions first, and then I'll have a couple of questions which I have in my list. So okay. first, let's take up the questions. I will. Sorry. One second. Yeah. So. Oh, okay. So we have a comment. Who says hi, lecturers? Hope you are well. Looking forward to this live discussion. This is by Mr. K U L L Y Singh. I don't know how to pronounce it, so okay. I won't do that. And yeah, so there's one question by Lekhoni. In these times, we are struggling with a lot of information to be included in few seconds or one page because audience uh, attention span is going down, which is so true. And what yeah. can you suggest? Oh, okay. I think there was a, can you hear me? What, 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 yeah, what is the question? The audience attention span is short and? Can you hear me? You 
you're slowing down a little bit. Connection slowing down, yeah? Yeah, so you can hear me now? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. So what is the so, question? Give me a moment. Hmm. What can you suggest as exercises or activities which can improve this attention span? Okay, activities uh, towards towards that can improve attention. What are the span? activities or uh, or things that you will suggest to improve the attention span? But like on your channel, I think the, 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 what improves attention span? You mean from from which from which side? Who from whose attention span? Now he's made a statement saying no, that uh, there's a lot of information around and there's a lot of things that you can concentrate on. So what are the various activities or what are your suggestions due to which uh, one will be able to increase that? Samitra, you're, you're, you're stopping you a little me? bit. The, the connection is, is slowing down a bit, your, your connection. Okay. Hello? Are you there? Yes, I'm here. Okay, okay, okay. The connection is a bit slow. It's okay, sorry. Bit, the question is to visualize for this attention span. Maybe do you want to ask the question all together at go? Uh, whoever, I don't know. There's some person called as Lake Noe who has put up this Your question. attention span, you've got and to shut goes, off distractions. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, but if you want to improve your attention span, you've got to shut off distractions. Is the distractions. If you want to improve the you have to create a regular flow of, of postings. Yeah, like what you're doing. A regular flow of, of posting if you want to improve the attention span of your channel, the audience, the audience reach. But if you want to improve your own attention span, you have to Okay, so can we can't hear you well enough. Yeah, can you hear me? There is a connection problem at your end, maybe right now. So maybe we can I'm, I'm, wait for I'm, a couple of seconds and then the, you can talk. I'm, very, I'm straight on the. Uh... Okay, now this is good. Okay, perfect. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. So. 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 I'll. Huh. Please. No, please. Please. So this person is asking a question, saying that it's not about the attention span, but he's saying, how should one visualize the attention span? I didn't really understand the question. Yeah, it's a bit generic. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, it is a bit generic, I think, but it's okay. I think you gave. Uh, I think that person can ask you the question again. Yeah. Maybe I will suggest. Okay. Uh, please, whoever has asked this question, please ask the question again later. Maybe you can send it as a message to Lecturus and maybe he can answer your question. I'm very sorry we could not take it up because of the whatever happened to the screen during that time. Uh, so I think I'll go ahead with my question, which is here. Uh, because you have been working in the industry and you have been a part of uh, very good uh, educational institutes like Kingston, RCA, and you have understood design over there. You've learned it. And you're also currently uh, pursuing your uh, PhD. So all this together, what do you think about design education then, design education today, and design education tomorrow? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Big answer. Yeah, 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 of course. Uh, okay. Uh, I think that we, uh, yeah. We must, uh, design education, we have a lot to learn how design education was done in the past. Okay, so really, uh, we need to look at a cycle of design education as a seven-year cycle, yeah? In a, in a, and look at, look at more design education in apprenticeship. Uh, I think mm -hmm. that uh, we've, we've gone too, too, too uh, close to other, the way other schools are doing education. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so the, the art school, the art and design school is a very unique institution that usually mm -hmm. has music, has performing arts, uh, has culture, has fine art, has all the areas of art and design. Yeah. The, 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 the art school is a very unique institution. And we really need to 
uh, understand how the art school is. At the same time, uh, design uh, traditionally, up to, up to recently, has always been part of art. Yeah? The artists were, mm. uh, the designers were looking always to the artists for inspiration. Now, of course, we're living in a time where everything is more, the, 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 the borders are a bit more blurry. But at the mm-hmm. same time, uh, we cannot be teaching design on its own. It, it didn't, mm-hmm. the design, uh, I mean, mm-hmm. it, it, as, as Paul Ryan says, it's all art. It's all art. Design belongs to the body of art. So in order to, to understand mm-hmm. design, you must uh, teach it as part, of, as part of the arts. And really then, mm-hmm. at, the, at one point, mm-hmm. uh, and, I, I'm, and I'm talking about visual communication design, because of course, I cannot generalize. Yeah, there, there's, of course, a product designer might, you know, might say something else. Or, yeah, but, but from a visual communication point of view, visual communication design, which mm-hmm. includes uh, illustration, graphic design, uh, digital media, uh, motion graphics, moving image, uh, and has a bit of a bit of a foot in in time based media. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, it's got to be taught as part of art. So uh, right now, uh, I think we've just learned how what to do with digital. You know, there was a time mm-hmm. uh, in the late eighties or the early nineties where we we're throwing away all the analog stuff, uh, and now mm-hmm. we're trying to save it <laughs> again. But we just understood how to use digital. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so now we can combine that and really, uh, of course, keep keep innovating, and, but also look mm-hmm. look uh, look to the past. Uh, also, another thing is about uh, uh, this is of conversation about this uh, distance teaching, yeah. Okay. And uh, a lot of the academies, for example, in, in Denmark mm-hmm. or other countries, uh, right now have gone back to one hundred percent physical. Yeah. So yeah, okay. it's it's nearly impossible to teach design, art and design, 100% virtual, 100% long distance. Mm-hmm. Okay? Uh, it can be blended, yeah? there, but but mm-hmm. even up that up to a point. Because also, what I don't I don't see anybody uh, talk about is the conversation about the students that are, they're learn the, the learning that takes place with a non non measurable aspects like talking to to their colleagues, being in the university, eating together, mm. you know, uh, talking in the corridors. I don't know, you know, getting to, mm. to, to the university. So there's all these elements of education, uh, mm. socializing, the social aspect of education between the students, that that is completely missing, and I, I haven't heard that conversation uh, being had about all the other elements of, of, of teaching and learning. Mm. Because teaching and learning is not just the, the, the time that students the spend. The books and curriculum. Us. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's everything else. It's, it's, it's a whole experience. So mm-hmm. it's, it's really upsetting that the students now are missing out on, the, mm. on their education experience. And we should mm. really uh, work. As, I mean, it can be done right now with the way things are. We can go back to mm. 100% uh, physical. Um, and I hope, uh, hopefully, we can go back back to that as soon as possible for the whole world. It's very hard to, to you know, it's all the elements because it's not distance teaching puts puts education on the information level. Yeah, we're not just exchanging information; mm. we're exchanging all these other areas mm. that are not measurable. Yeah, the, you, nobody can measure what's happening uh, on the on, on every other aspect of teaching and learning. Uh, mm. So really. Uh, the school of the future, we have to make sure that we keep the international aspect, international collaboration, uh, not look at education as a uh, as country specific, yeah? open up, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. being as inclusive as possible, but also realize mm-hmm. that design being a craft, it has to be passed on as a craft. If you want to become mm-hmm. Uh, a painter, you know, you had to go and mix the colors, you know, so start grinding the pigments. It's, it's the process of, of learning a craft. So uh, mm. we have to understand that it's a fragile thing and it needs to be uh, seen in its own um, uh, merit, not, not being confused with teaching physics or mathematics or other things, which might be easier. I don't know, I'm not an expert, but it might be easier to transmit online. Uh, really, design mm. education takes place offline. Uh, from from a teacher to a student. Yeah, yeah, I agree. But yes, today's times are absolutely difficult, and we have to have that balance between security 
and from a life threatening oh, structure absolutely. Absolutely. and absolutely. education absolutely. so everyone is trying to grapple with this idea and find out how can they actually collaborate and how can they have this uh, like you said this blended learning you know and uh, of course i am hoping that all this gets uh, better sooner and uh, we also start getting back to the campus we miss our campus like anything and we definitely would like to go back to campus and work it out out there and it's it's easier i must say it is easier when it is on the campus it is easier it's it not, is it's uh, not about easier or more difficult it is it's, it's, more you're communicating also. you're communicating mm. something really in a non verbal yes. way the way you're exactly. standing in the space the way you're organizing the space the way you know mm. all these elements that cannot be replicated exactly. uh, in this in this particular but, but, format yeah but with that i think uh, we have been lucky all of us in fact we have been lucky that we have been able to hold these online structures also along otherwise imagine this happening during the spanish flu it would have been a completely different uh, thing and today i think we are still uh, technologically advanced and hence lucky in a way but i'm really hoping like you said and i agree with you on that part that yes we need to go back Uh, soon and as soon as possible is all we can say so uh, yeah i think uh, with that we can probably uh, end our discussion and maybe a few ending notes from you a little uh, advice to students and then we can say bye yeah i mean uh, really just keep playing yeah don't don't stop playing this is meant to be fun you know I, sometimes i'm in the classroom and it's like we're talking about design and it's it's such a luxury it's it's a luxury mm-hmm. for somebody to be in a room talking about design especially when all these things are happening around the world which are not as pleasant yeah so yeah. realize that the students are very lucky uh, they're very lucky to be studying design and make sure that you never stop having fun you never you don't see it if you see it as a burden you're in the wrong profession yeah so and it's best to change early don't be afraid to change If, if you see it as a chore, oh my God, I have to, I have to do design again. I have to draw it. If it's a chore, if, 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 it. if it's too much of a chore, <laughs> you're in the wrong profession. Yeah. yeah. So mm-hmm. it's got to be a joy. It's not always a joy. It's the most. It's one of the most difficult things. Yeah. You got to be an eternal optimist. A designer has to be an optimist uh, to go through all this, all the, all the hurdles and the struggles. But uh, yeah, keep having fun. Yes. Okay. Keep having fun. So let's stop on this. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you. So Thank much. you. Thank Bye. You. Take All care. The All the best. Thank you. Thank you.